Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, does the success of Rajon Rondo prove that the Clippers needed him after all. So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the uh, make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, be sure to check out our Dreamers Pro podcast, which we have linked in the description below. Also, be on the lookout for our Dreamers Pro premium platform that we should be launching sometime next week. And because we said we're going to launch it in the first week of January, which we're uh, super excited about. And also, DreamersPro.com, which is going to be a major staple of this company moving forward this year now that we finally um have had some time to kind of hash out a website and really get that going so that's something that we're super 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 uh excited about and as i told you guys we're very serious man we're not just here producing videos man we we're, we're trying to take it to the next level so be on the lookout for that anyway so let me get into the topic here with this whole rajon rondo thing now rajon rondo was one of the most coveted off-season um, free agents this last season because of his title run that he had with the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, if we look at Rajon Rondo's career overall, right? Like, because some people may, funny enough, some people may just have heard of the guy the last year or two, like maybe his last run. Rajon Rondo has been in the league for a very long time. He started his career in 2006 and he played from 2006 to 2014 with the Boston Celtics, where he helped them win their uh, their title in 2008 with Paul uh, with Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen, and Doc Rivers as their head coach. I remember he was there, and he was I mean he was a tough guy to deal with, but he would you know he was one of the guys that helped them win that champion championship. He's a two-time NBA champion, as I said, with, in 2008 and 2020. He's a four-time All Star. He's made an All NBA team. He's made an All uh, All Third NBA team in 2012. He's made two All NBA first defensive teams, which I was unaware of, and he's made two de second defensive teams. So the guy has made four All NBA defensive teams, right? So Rajon Rondo is a very, very, very great defensive player as well. He led the league in assists three separate years and he did it twice back to back in 2013 2012 then he did it in 2016 and he also led the nba in steals in 2010 so if you look at rajon rondo's numbers this far and the fact that he just won his second nba title rajon rondo is trying to make a case for himself in the hall of fame now some people may say listen the guy may need another ring to kind of make you know make that argument to say hey listen i want to be a hall of fame player but so far the guy has had a very 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 successful career when it comes to winning playing defense and he shows you that he showed you that he's an all-around player with his playmaking defense uh in in, in championship uh um uh, what is it championship uh, pedigree now last season for the lakers if we go and look at his numbers here let me see if i have him here yes last season for the lakers he averaged about 20 minutes per game he shot 43% from the field, 40% from the three. Now, if those of you guys have been following basketball long enough know, Rajon Rondo, when he started his career, he was a horrendous shooter. Like, teams would just leave him open, and he couldn't hit shots. He would clunk, 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 clunk shots. And over time, he's turned himself into a very, very, very good shooter, respectable shooter, kind of similar to what Jason Kidd did. When Jason Kidd came into the league, he was a great playmaker, great point guard, one of the best point guards in the league, but he wasn't a great player, uh, a shooter. But as time went on, by the time he was, you know, in his 30s, mid-30s, especially when he won his first title with the Dallas Mavericks, he was a, he was a knockdown three-point shooter. And that's something Rajon Rondo seems to have uh, seems to have been able to do. Uh, for himself last season with the you know and he was attempting 3.3 uh three uh three pointers a game he got them 2.3 uh, rebounds and what 3.3 assists in the regular season but if i go and look at his numbers in the playoffs which i should have here yes last season in the playoffs he averaged for the lakers 8.9 points 1.4 steals 4.3 rebounds shot 68 percent from the free throw line shot 40 percent again from the three-point line for the playoffs that's in 16 games, 40%, and then he shot 45% from the field. And if you watch those games, you got to see these numbers actually in context, and you saw that he was a very, very, very important contributor to the Lakers winning that title last year. I think no one uh, can dispute that. I don't think they would have won that title without him. He was he was probably their third best player in the playoffs behind LeBron uh, and, and Anthony Davis. Now, um, during the offseason, there were some things being made of the fact that, yes, the Clippers do need a point guard, and some people even spoke to the part about having a leader now the leader the leadership part i'm i'm not sure 
I don't know. Um, it, se it, it seems like a platitude that a lot of these guys use on TV. Okay, so we need a good lead. I'm not sure what that means, right? Because I'm not in the locker room with these guys. I don't know these guys. And leadership, you're measuring how we how we measure leadership. If a team wins, it, it, you know, then you can say they have a good leader. But there are many good te there are many teams that have leaders and lost, right? I mean, so how do we measure this, right? Derek Fisher, who's a great leader, Kobe Bryant was a great leader, have lost before. So is it because they didn't have good leaders? I mean, LeBron has lost before. LeBron is a great leader. What does that really mean, right? I don't know what it means. People like to say, oh, because you have a leader. I don't know what it means. Like, and, and when people say that, I think they need to go a little bit further in depth. They say, well, if you had a leader on the team, then the person would have been saying this. But how do you know that that wasn't being said anyway? And maybe those guys just couldn't get over the hump. And people were saying that. These are things that people say that I don't really understand, but nevertheless, people seem to say it over and over, and no one really seems to ask them, hey, listen, what exactly do you mean? Can you can you, um, can you you go further with this point that you're trying to make, but no one seems to ask these guys this question, these questions, and that's why these guys say it, and a lot of people run with it, and most people don't even know what it means. Like, I'm not saying I have the answer, but I don't know when, I don't, I don't understand when people say, you need a leader. A leader as far as what? You know, somebody to say this galvanize. How do you know that wasn't already taking place? And you're telling me that just because good leaders are there and they try to sometimes the results still don't come anyway. Right. We're not talking about you're trying to get a, a are you talk, if you're trying to talk about a war general Garibaldi or one of these guys. And that's something else. Right. But it's something, again, that people say, uh, say, 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 say. Now, thus far, they were not able to get they were not able to get Rajon Rondo. He decided to go play with the Atlanta Hawks. And funny enough. The Atlanta Hawks are currently 3-0 and with, uh, with Rajon Rondo. Now, we're not going to put that all on him, but he certainly does play an impact. And if we look at the last game where they beat the Detroit Pistons, nevertheless, they beat the Detroit Pistons. They still, they're still 3-0. and And Rajon Rondo, as usual, he had, what, 12 points and 8 assists for the team. Now, I'm not discounting the fact that having a veteran in the league that people respect doesn't play a role. Absolutely. I was just trying to get to that leadership point. But I do feel that he's been a very good impact guy so far for that team. Now, there's been certain teams that he's been that he's played with in the past where he didn't get along with people. He played with the Dallas Mavericks where he just kind of messed up the entire locker when they had to kick him up out of there. So a lot of there were a lot of teams where Rajon Rondo did not fit. Right. It wasn't like as if you just been this jolly, jolly old good guy and all that. No, Rajon Rondo is a tough guy. He's a tough personality to manage. And Doc Rivers is one of the first people that said that him and Ray Allen clashed all the time uh, with the Boston Celtics. But so far, he seems like he's been very valuable to the Clippers now uh, to, the, to the Atlanta Hawks. Now, let me talk about why I think he would be he would have been a good fit for the for the Clippers. And I'm not going to get into the whole leadership thing because I don't know. Again. I don't know what guys are talking about when they're saying that because they don't explain it in depth. And for me, I'm not just going to start saying things that I don't understand just to say it because he said it and then we all say it and then all of us are saying it, you know, the blind leading the blind and we're just like a bunch of sheep going around saying this thing when we really don't understand what they mean. Talking about him, why the Clippers would have needed him, I'm talking about the fact that given the fact that they want to run this new offense with the triangle offense, having a guy with a basketball IQ like Rajon Rondo would have helped, right? I'm, we're, 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 we're quantitatively um, sort of describing why he would be a good fit for the Clippers. And for me, I think someone having someone like that, having a smart guy that understands the offense, understands the plays, knows plays book, no play, knows uh, playbook, has been in the league for well over 13 years, is somebody that you can rely on to be able to understand these plays and put guys in the right position to succeed. Kind of like what you're seeing with the Nicholas Batum and these guys. High IQ guys is something that the Clippers could have benefited from. And given the fact that they want to run this new triangle offense, I think he would have been a perfect fit for the team, given the fact that's what they're trying to do. Given the that that's the scenario that the Clippers are currently in. I think Rajon Rondo would have been a good fit for the Lake uh, for the for the Clippers, and I think he could have helped them. But I think whatever team he goes to, he can help any team. Given the fact of his accomplishments and his credentials, I just read off to you his IQ and all of these different things. Given the fact that he's fresh off an NBA championship, he has championship experience. I think he could help any single team that he's on. Right? Some teams more than others, depending on the fact, depending on how close they are to being title contenders. If you're going to, if if Rajon Rondo was going to the New York Knicks. Obviously, he could help them, but help them to what extent? To get to the playoffs or the finals? No. But if he's going to a playoff contender, uh, you know, a title contender, then absolutely he could, his impact can be uh, uh, much more greatly um, um, felt. So for me, I do think that the Clippers, that the success that he has is proven that the Clippers could definitely needed him 
and could have benefited from his presence. So what I want to know from you guys is, do you agree with me? Do you think that the Clippers could have benefited by having Rajon Rondo and their roster? If you agree, please let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you disagree, whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoy the video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Also, be sure to check out the next video that we have linked at the end of this video. If you enjoy this video, you're definitely going to enjoy that video. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day and catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.